What's going on guys? I'm the Walrus Jedi, and today I have something a little different. Usually it would be a Star Wars review, but today we'll be talking the history of Star Wars Expanded Universe, or as it's known today, Star Wars Legends. Real quick, please consider liking and subscribing for more content like this. This video took a while to make so it would really help if you would like and subscribe and now back to the topic the star wars expanded universe was born on february 12th 1978 with alan dean foster's splinter of the mind's eye this book was to serve as a cheap sequel to 1977's star wars or as we know it today episode 4 a new hope if Star Wars didn't succeed at the box office, but A New Hope was a hit, and so this book just serves as a story between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. However, this book was the genesis of what was to be called the Star Wars Expanded Universe. The EU was sporadic with its releases until West End Games published the Star Wars role-playing game in 1987. This game was the first place where we get alien names such as Twi'lek, Rodian, and Quarren. It also expanded on the Arabesh, which is the name of the Star Wars alphabet, if you didn't know, that we had seen in Return of the Jedi. The various guidebooks for the role-playing game were used as a basis for future EU novels, like Tim Thizan's Thrawn Trilogy. Zahn's Thrawn Trilogy, which was Heir to the Empire, published in 1991, Dark Force Rising, published in 1992, and The Last Command in 93, was... This was publicized as the sequels George never made. This trilogy gave Star Wars literature the shot in the arm it needed. Dark Horse Comics had acquired the rights... had acquired the comic rights around this time as well. All of these various sources were a feedback on itself. The role-playing game used stuff from the books and comics, and the various creators, both books and comics, used the role-playing game as reference for their works. The scope of the expanded universe grew exp exceptionally fast. In the tail end of the 1990s, the creatives decided the Dark Empire as the main villains had become a bit repetitive and boring, so they introduced the Yusan Vong in the New Jedi Order series, spe specifically the first novel in the series, Vector Prime. Alright, now the prequel era. Before Star Wars The Force Unleashed was released, Lucasfilm had prohibited development of any stories prior to A New Hope, save the tales of the Jedi series, which was set thousands of years in the past. This changed when Star Wars Episode I The Phantom Menace was released in May of 1999. This gave writers a new era to play in and develop. Since Phantom Menace was set in a peaceful time, most books that built on Phantom Menace were set before or during the movie, not after. This changed with the Clone Wars. The Clone Wars, something fans had wanted to see and learn more of for decades, fans got their wish in the form of several books, comics, and two TV shows. The TV show serves as a lead up to Revenge of the Sith. With all this new stuff came several contradictions, however, of previous books and comics, particularly involving the Clone Wars in the Thrawn trilogy. They have since retconned this by other means, so all is well. They also continued to connect the original trilogy to the prequel trilogy. Throughout the 2000s, the EU continued to grow. Books like Drew Carpetian's Darth Bane trilogy, Karen Travis's Republic Commando series, video games like Knights of the Old Republic or KOTOR, and Knights of the Old Republic 2 or KOTOR 2, Battlefront and Battlefront 2, Republic Commando, and The Force Unleashed and The Force Unleashed 2, and the 2003 Clone Wars 2D animated 
Clone Wars TV show all developed the Star Wars galaxy. George Lucas uh, sold Lucasfilm to Disney on October 30th, 2012 for $4.05 billion in cash and stock. One point eight fifty five of that four billion was in stock. This sale wouldn't affect the EU for the time being. EU projects still came out, but there started to be less of them. That was because in 2014 Disney announced that they would be ending the expanded universe after more than three decades of novels, comics, video games, movies, and TV shows. That was a very sad day. Disney calls it Legends now, in June of 2021, to celebrate Lucasfilm Limited's 50th anniversary, they began publishing the Essential Legends Collection. This was a new publishing with new cover art, and in a bigger size. Uh, to date, they have announced or published 24 books in this series, spanning multiple eras and highlighting different characters. Perhaps if these sell well, along with the rest of the Legends slash EU catalog, Disney will greenlight more EU slash Legends uh, books or stories. We can only hope, but hopefully. Alright, the eras covered in the Expanded Universe. The films cover only 37 years, whereas the EU covers... 36,591 years. The earliest work of the EU chronologically is the Dawn of the Jedi comic series, which is set 36,453 years before the movies. The most recent chronologically is the Legacy comic series, which is set 138 years after Return of the Jedi. Here are the eras using BBY or ABY, or before the Battle of Yavin and after the Battle of Yavin. Uh, you have the pre-Republic era, 36,463 BBY to 25,053 BBY. This era is entirely before the Republic exists. It was first mentioned in the game Knights of the Old Republic, the Rakata, a bipedal species from the world of Lahone in the Unknown Regions, established an empire on galactic proportions using the dark side of the Force. The era ended with the Rakatan Empire failing and the founding of the Galactic Republic in 25,053 BBY. Then you have the Old Republic era, 5,000 BBY to 1,000 BBY. This era, the Jedi are numerous and serve as the guardians of peace and justice. The tales of the Jedi comics are in this era. They tell of immense wars fought by the Jedi of old and the ancient Sith. KOTOR 1 and 2, uh, the games, the MMO Star Wars, The Old Republic, and the Darth Bane book trilogy, among other projects, are set in this era. This era ends with the Bane Sith continuing in the shadows. Then you have the Rise of the Empire era, which is 1000 BBY to 0 BBY. This era takes place after the false defeat of the Sith. The prequels are set in this era. In the Republic's Twilight, the Senate is corrupted beyond saving it, which enables the corrupt, the current Sith, Sith Lord, Darth Sidious, who is the Supreme Chancellor of the Republic in disguise. He orchestrated the Clone Wars. He promised to reunite the galaxy under an empire and destroyed the majority of the Jedi. Then you have the Rebellion Era. 0 BBY to 4 ABY. With the Republic dead, pockets of rebellion begin to foment and gain traction. This begins the Galactic Civil War. This era starts with the Rebellion's destructive run on the Death Star. It ends with the destruction of the second Death Star and the death of Emperor Palpatine over the Forest Moon of Endor. The Rebellion begins to form itself into a government, first the Alliance to restore the Republic, then, with their victory, the New Republic. The original trilogy is set in this era. And then you have the New Republic era, which is 4 ABY to 25 ABY. After the Empire's defeat, the New Republic reclaims Imperial territory 
and experiences growing pains. What with insurrections, imperial loyalists, and wayward warlords, Luke begins the rebuilding of the Jedi Order. The Thrawn trilogy is set in the New Republic era. Then you have the New Jedi Order, 25 ABY to 37 ABY. With the Jedi numbering over 100 strong, the New Republic signs a peace treaty with the remains of the Empire. There is finally peace after decades of war. This peace ended when aliens invading from the Republic, or invading the Republic from beyond known space. These aliens are the Yusan Vong, and they lay waste to worlds in a conquest of the galaxy. And to make matters worse, these buggers are immune to the Force. This detailed in the new Jedi Order novels. In the Darkness trilogy, falls at, at the end of this era. In in these uh, in this trilogy, the mysterious Killick encroached the Chiss ascendancy, inciting a three-way war between the Chiss, the Killick, Hive and the Galactic Alliance, with the Jedi falling in all sides. Then you have Legacy Era, 37 ABY to 138 ABY. Having made peace with the Yusan Vong, the newly formed Galactic Federation of Free Alliances, or Galactic Alliances, or GA for short, struggles to maintain functionality as a single government, but the Dark Side threatens to give rise to a Sith Lord more powerful than Darth Sidious. The Jedi Order faces a new era as the heirs of Skywalker's legacy grow up. One pairs with an old enemy of Luke's who promises Luke's heir if they become the next Sith Lord they'll bring peace to the galaxy. The legacy of the Force novels are set in this era. They are followed by the fate of the Jedi series. Much later in this era are the legacy comics. Set 138 years after the Battle of Yavin, we follow Kate Skywalker. Luke's descendant, who deals with a resurrected galactic empire controlled by a new Sith Order. Alright, notable works of Legends. For film and TV, you have the Star Wars Holiday Special, the two Ewok movies, Caravan of Courage, and the Battle of Endor. Then you have the, t the animated TV show, Star Wars Droids, another animated show, Ewoks, and then you have the 2003 2D animated Clone Wars show. Novels, Splinter of the Mind's Eye, Heir to the Empire, Darth Bane, Path of Destruction, Darth Plagueis, Republic Commando, Hard Contact. For comics, the Marvel comic run from 97, or 1990, 1977 to 1986, Star Wars Republic, Star Wars Empire, Star Wars Tales of the Jedi. For video games, you have KOTOR 1 and 2, Jedi Knight 2 and 3, The Force Unleashed, SWOTOR, and X-Wing, Republic Commando, both Battlefronts, and LEGO Star Wars. And now I would like to have a moment of silence for the Star Wars Expanded Universe. It had a good run, 1978 to 2014. It will be missed. And now to conclude, the expanded universe is massive. It's going to take the Disney canon decades and decades to catch up. And that's not to mention if it will be better. Time will tell. I wish the EU, or Legends, as it is called now, was still getting new books and comics and shows and movies and video games and that. Disney, w I think Disney would make money continuing the EU. But for now, we'll have to hope that maybe someday in our lifetime, the EU will get new material. Well, what did you think of this video? Should Disney make more EU slash Legends? How long do you think it'll take the Disney canon to catch up to Legends? Will it exceed legends in quality tell me in the comments this was a big video and it was fun to make 
but it took a lot of effort. Uh, so if you would want to see more stuff like this, then uh, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you have any ideas for more videos like this, please let me know in the comments. Until the next video, thank you very much for watching.